Daisy Savage and today I'm here with Luke Wright whose show is called Ethic Lion. Um, why did you choose to base your show around the uh, well, Lion Well, it sort of started last year at um, August Bank Holiday Weekend. I was coming out of Edinburgh on a really early train and I hung over and it was grey, it was depressing and I, I went on Twitter and I saw this hashtag Essex Lion because the Essex Lion, these people have been clapped and thought they'd seen this lion but they hadn't. I see the cat called Teddy Bear actually. <laughs> <laughs> And I just thought, I was like, that's a really cool combination of words. Cause I, I'm from Essex, so I just thought, this would just be a cool thing to call your show, even if you had no theme or anything like that. So at that point, I kind of committed to it. Um, and then I looked up the story, and I thought it was really interesting how these people thought they had seen a lion. Like a whole campsite mass hallucinated a lion when it was actually like a cat, like a domestic cat about the size of a terrier. You know? um, I thought, well, yeah, you could, to have that happen, you, it's going to be a wish, wishful thinking. You've got to kind of want to see that lion. Yeah. Everyone goes, oh, you, you, know, you want to believe it. You want to believe a lion can roam around the field of Essex. The same way you want to believe there's the beast of Bob you want to believe there's a dinosaur living at the bottom of Loch Ness. You know, people, we want to believe these things because I think it makes. Cause I think we're increasingly like a, we're, we're a sort of godless people and, and we kind of want there to be something else. Yeah. We want there to be a bit of mystery in our lives. Um, mm-hmm. so, so I wrote that poem, it was quite a comic poem, but I thought that's quite an interesting sort of, you know. Theme. So I started writing other things about you know about things that we hope are true. So a lot of poems about nostalgia or longing or hope and those sort of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how do you write your shows? Do you have to sit down and have a very quiet room, or you want these people that need background noise? I uh, I have to be very quiet when I write. But um, I mean, I, my, my shows are kind of different to a lot of people's because because I write poems. Um, I start to collect poems as the year goes along. When we get to about sort of March time, I think right when I really have to start through that into all these poems, then we have to sort of settle on it. So yeah, at first I thought I was just going to do poems about Essex, um, I kind of do a sort of state of the nation, but via it, everyone being in Essex, um, a little microcosm of the nation, and so, so it did change as time went on, it wasn't, wasn't that thing was a meme, that three lines, that just developed over time. Mm-hmm. So then I took the poems on stage, um, like I've been touring last year's show, so I've been dropping a few little new ones in as I go along, trying them out, and I have a rough idea about how I'm going to introduce them. Okay. And then so... That, that rough idea ends up becoming jokes as you're doing this. Most of, them are, most, most, most of the stuff in between poems were at one point an ad lib that I'd record, you know, because I record my mm-hmm. shows and I listen back and I'm going to use that and do that one again. So, it's a, so, so, so one half of the show is very raw and kind of created on yeah. stage, and the other half is, you know, is very, you know, quietly planned, you know, as I write the poems. Yeah. Yeah. And then throughout your show it will change, and then at the end you've got something that is pretty solid. Y- yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I pretty much say the same stuff every night now. Yeah. But, but even even up in Edinburgh, I'm still living. There's one really important bit of the show, one little sort of um, sort of illustrative little anecdote, which which I dropped in on the first day, and, and it works really well. So it's kind of in the show. So uh, yeah, it feels pretty stabilised now, which is a great thing about doing it night after night after night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the poems are kind of I, d- I don't really change those change those once I've once I've written them. Yeah. Um, you know, once uh, you know, even if like somebody's not getting as big a laugh as I expected, you know, in, in a comic poem, I kind of think well maybe you know the line is how I wanted the line to be. It's a shame it's not doing well stand as well as I hoped for. <laughs> um, but then other stuff that I, I thought was kind of like a wry smile gets a big belly laugh. So yeah. Yeah. I can't second guess all this. I'm not really going to tell you it's going to be funny or not. As long as enough of it, it's kind of funny. Uh huh. And so you've had six solo shows. This is um, my seventh. Yeah. Yes, you're yeah, seven. Yeah. yeah. Um, so are they all completely different? Just something you just happen to think of, or are um, they sort of vary? Like um, it, the, the format is all fairly similar. Like it, it, it's a mm. series of poems strung together with um, with with, 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 with some little ninky dialogue. Yeah. Um, a couple of them last year showed your new favourite poet and uh, a poet's work is never done, which was the third show. They weren't really shows. They were sort of just a collection of poems. They were like an hour long set. Mm. First one I did because I wanted to see what I could do with that theme. And last yeah. year I was only coming up for five nights. And I, I wasn't expecting to have a whole week show in the end it was all new stuff um, um, but they aesthetically all kind of fitted together because you know you tend to be you know you, I go through stages of, of different styles of writing different things can be interesting like last year it was very much I was thinking about tabloid culture quite a lot and I was thinking about uh, the media and a lot of the poems even if they weren't about tabloids they had that kind of tabloid aesthetic that would come from the in your face and this year it's much more contemplative it's more mm-hmm. sort of uh, uh, nostalgic and, uh, and a bit slower maybe a bit darker yeah. A little bit less light-hearted. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I mean, the show I did two years ago, the last run of the Atelical Ballad, that was some, they were all story poems, you know, all ballad, yeah. ballads, and some of them were written in slightly different ways, they're essentially mm-hmm. mostly in ballad detail. Um, so that was a very strong theme for that one. Uh, and there was quite a lot of dark stuff in there. Um, so it, change, it, change, you know, it changes, you know, and you can, you can kind of identify, you know, if, if I gave you all of my, all, you know, all 60 of the poems that have been on the shows, 
you could probably start to work them into, you know, into groupings because yeah. the style changes over the years. Mm. Yeah. Great, and what are your plans for after the Fringe? Um, I've got quite a lot of dates. This one booked already. I'm off to Hong Kong. This okay. is in Hong Kong, which is exciting. Um, I've never been to Hong Kong before. Um, um, just touring, and I'm going to spend more time at home. Um, the two of don't sound like they're conducive, but um, <laughs> I, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm doing some fun gigs, but I'm going to be on the road left. My little boy starts school. Um, so, and my wife starts school, so I work. So, I'm going to spend a little bit more time writing, a little bit less time walking my words around the country. So, that's exciting. I don't know what's going to grow out of that yet. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it might just be more poems initially, but it might, it might be something else. Yeah. So Great. Well, thanks very much for talking to pleasure. us. Pleasure. And if you'd like to see the show, it's on at Assembly George Square, 6 pm. Thank you.